case on tonight's agenda is REZ 2015-02, Divine Subdivision. Staff, would you please present? Yes, sir. Thank you. The request in this case is a request to change the zoning on the subject property from R1 to R10. The subject property itself is actually larger than what's being requested for rezoning. It's around 70 acres. And what's being requested is around the 24-acre portion of that 70-acre property. With that, staff looked at this request. We did recommend for its approval. We did want to put a condition on there regarding the lots and their frontage. We don't believe there is an issue with that condition. But since the work session last week and overall through the processing of the case, you will – you had some updates with it. More of a Q&A update last week from staff. We also had a lesson today that I tried to give you a copy of and included some comments from opposition. With that, you should have both of those updates. The only other update that I would report is the applicants have been working hard with a potential issue on the property, which is a small cemetery. They actually went to the due diligence of hiring an archaeologist who went out there and published their report this weekend that cleared the area that they surveyed where they thought the cemetery might be located from actually a cemetery being located at this location. So with that, they did do that survey for the area where they anticipated the cemetery to be located. And so we did get a report today that actually cleared that location where they searched from that cemetery. So with that, those are the updates to the opposition and also the cemetery, which was late breaking today. But that's what I would offer you for your consideration tonight. Thank you, staff. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. The county engineer, Mr. Mike Fletcher, is here. I know that is not typical for the county commission, but because of the type of questions and the issues that are surrounding this case, his presence here is actually very helpful. So, yes, he is a staff member of the Dietary Library. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Wills? I'd like to hear what the engineer says about Tillman Road and traffic in that area and how this subdivision is going to be. Anything else you want to add to that? To say that Tillman Crossing and 41 does not have a problem now, I can't say that. There's an issue there now. You know, another small subdivision of this magnitude, I do not feel will bring any more detriment to that intersection. The county does have a project that we're working on either through SPLOSH or through potential state and federal funding to do some improvements to this road. The extent of the improvements are not, you know, everything has not been ironed out. As some of you will remember, back in 08, there was a project to four-lane this road all the way from the Hillside Austin Road all the way through the city of Hayhire. That has been taken off of the DOT's planning. The scope of the work now could be anywhere from widening from Union Road south down to North Austin Road. It could be a center turn lane. You're just going from a two-lane to a three-lane road. It could just be some dedicated left turn lanes at certain locations and some XLD cell lanes. So to say exactly what we will do, I can't say that. To go back to this intersection, there's only 50 foot of right-of-way out there now. To do this, to add a dedicated left turn lane and a deceleration lane, I talked with the Scruggs Company, and you're looking at somewhere between $250,000 and $300,000 to put this pair in there. Staff, myself, and Jason would both feel that this would be an undue burden on this developer because the problem exists today. If this subdivision doesn't come in today, the problem is still there. It still needs a XLD cell lane and it still needs a dedicated left turn lane. So to require someone to come in and fix somebody, you know, the fix pass ends, in our opinion, was not necessary. We feel like this will be fixed whenever the county does its improvements to the road. Do you know when that might be? As of today, I do not know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher.
as of right now, it is scheduled for the 2021. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and, and that is, and I mean, and that could be moved forward, uh, depending on the uh, county commission. And uh, things like that. But as of as we see here today, there is no project. Uh, there is no marching uh, orders on how the project will look. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner, any other questions for staff? I just have one question. I understand the way it's zoned right now to accommodate 19 building lots. If the zoning changed, there would be 57 lots. Is that your understanding as well? Yes, sir, I believe it is. Too. Well, that's a difference of 48 houses, and you say there would be no change in traffic flow with 48 there, there will be. There will, there will still be increased traffic. There will be. Uh, I mean, you, if you had one house out there, you would have had increased traffic. Uh, but, you, but the fact that there's over 100 lots in Carlton Bridge, and there's over 600 lots in Stone Creek, I know not all the Stone Creek lots use that back entrance. Not all of them use that there. But everything at Carlton Bridge has to use it. Uh, the newest phase of uh, Stone Creek has to use it. So to, but, so to put all of that burden to, to say that just those those 50, 50 lots, if, if this was the only development on this road, would the county require uh, a dedicated left turn lane and a deceleration lane? No, sir, we would not. Because there's 192 feet from the railroad tracks back out to, uh, to 41 per second. We had um, some GIS data that just had an approximate location, and so they did a 100-foot, um, I believe it was, a, I'm not sure if it was a 100-foot radius or 100-foot diameter. It was a 100-foot radius, 100-foot diameter. And around the cemetery. It was very vague as to where it said it was. All it said is a mile and a half north of Mineola. From what part of Mineola did they measure? I mean, we know that it was a southern, there was a, a cemetery in on Creek. There's also one across over there at, at Grove Point. It could have been either one of those that it, that it referenced. So, so where is the approximate location on this on the side of this one? Do you see the clearing in the southeastern portion of the aerial mm -hmm. where it shows a little bit of the clearing? It was just to the right of that was the approximate location and that's where they did the search at. So that's <coughs> the first thing <coughs> the top. Yes ma'am. Do you know how wide, what's the frontage on that street? Do we have any idea? You mean of the entire parcel or just mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. It's around 1,584 feet. And then that dog leg to the east right before you get to the railroad tracks is about 60 feet.
So you're adding an extra 10 to 15 minutes of any response time for any emergency person, which, you know, in hindsight, being 2020, show it probably would have been considered progressive. So is any of that in there in your conclusions about this? Yes, sir. And um, I, I had made a request to the uh, Georgia State Patrol uh, to find out exactly how many accidents have occurred at this intersection. Uh, they were supposed to have the data to be today, but the lady said they have to get from Pippin and so it will be here uh, before the uh, county commission meeting. Uh, but I know there have been a few accidents at that site, or at that intersection, uh, but to, um, you know, to, to but without looking at exactly what were the causes and everything of the accident, I can't really make that educated decision. Um, I mean, I, I can't say there, there's a problem there now. I mean, nobody in here denies that there's not a problem there now. Uh, but uh, for the for this development to bear the whole burden, we, would, we wouldn't require that if they were, they were here by themselves. If this was the first development on the ground. Any other questions for staff or commissioners? If not, 